thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. May God bless you. A special greeting for all of you, all of the brothers and sisters that are here gathering, the English-speaking brothers and sisters. We have, as well, brothers and sisters in the other room, those that have, as well, whom are visiting from other services. Welcome. Welcome to the gathering here with our Lord. A feast with our Lord. And as well with a willing heart to worship our Lord, to glorify Him with the teaching, analyzing upon the Lord. And today we're going to be joyful saying to Him how much we love Him. How much we love Him because all that is here written in this book, we live it. We live it in our experiences, spiritually, materially, physically in our daily life. We live all of these experiences. And all that happened in the biblical characters, we as well experience them. The Lord is manifesting, doing the same works, the same things he did as what is written. This is why we believe in the book. This is why we believe in the Bible. Because there it is written a story that the Lord, since he created man, has acted with man in this time. We are enjoying the same. And it is certain. It says that the Lord is the same of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. He has never changed. And we see the same God, the same one that spoke to Moses, that manifested with him and the people of Israel in the ancient times. So we are joyful and proud of our Lord. Proud of of having believed that God has found us, has searched for us, and that he has us here gathered as his church. So we give thanks to our Lord for this. We are not worthy, but that is the love of God. That is the mercy of the Lord. And we are studying the Psalms. So let us continue with Psalms today. You may be seated. And as well, a special greeting for all of the brothers and sisters and all of those persons that are watching the video from the different locations around the world where the Church of Our Lord may be. A special greeting for all of you. And may God bless you. And in this manner, without any more hesitation, let us take advantage of our time. And let us open to Psalms 18. Psalms 18. But a brief history of the Psalms. We know, a majority of us already know, what the Psalms refer to. What are the Psalms? But there are sometimes there are those that are new or who just recently arrived they don't pray, and they don't know what psalms are. So they are songs, spiritual songs to the Lord. Who composed them? In the ancient times when King David ordered his son Solomon to build a temple for God there in Jerusalem. And King Solomon built a temple, and David called seven singers they were prophets these singers of israel were prophets and when they began to interpret these musical instruments and sing to god the holy spirit would come so what they sang were pure prophecies were prophetic words that were referring to the Savior, to that of what was coming, to this, our Lord Jesus Christ, and referring to the church. And there in these Psalms, which are prophecies, some have already been fulfilled and others are being fulfilled today with the believers. And these songs we find when the Lord intervenes to the Father for his people, for his church. 
And as well we find when the believers in the Lord as well present themselves before God asking for mercy, asking for support, for blessing, asking for the Lord to never leave them. That is the prayer of the believers. That prayer inspired by God. He knowing the problems that later on the church, the believers, would be facing, suffering. Then he would intervene for us in his prayers, in his songs here in Psalms. And he takes the voice for the church. Or sometimes he would take the voice of himself and directs himself to God, the Father. So in these marvelous Psalms, when we read them, always let us look at whom is speaking. The Lord Jesus, or is the church, or the believers, or is speaking the Father, the powerful Lord. And in this manner, we are going to be able to understand and comprehend the Psalms. Because there are many praises for the Lord. And there we shall learn to pray and to worship God, to glorify the Lord. Because the words sometimes hide from us. The words are sometimes few in our vocabulary to be able to refer ourselves to the Lord. Our soul and our heart want to exalt the Lord, but the words don't exist. So we learn from Psalms. When we read Psalms, there we can memorize some verses to be able to say to the Lord in the moment when you gather to glorify our Lord. Or perhaps as well when you're at home in your dwelling place, you can take time to praise God. And there you have plenty of vocabulary to exalt him. So the Psalms tells us the life of the Lord, his sufferings. And there we find so many marvels and treasures in Psalms. Which is what the world has never discovered. So Psalms read it as poetry. Oh, how beautiful this poem. But when we read, we discover mysteries, revelations, doctrines. We discover many things. And this makes our spiritual life grow. So therefore, Psalms 18. Are we ready, brothers and sisters? I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Here, a person speaking. It is a person that is speaking here. Because saying, I love you, O Lord. Who is this person? Who is this character? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ presenting himself before the Lord. Verse 3 reads, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord had many enemies. His brother Israelites were enemies of the Lord because he did not believe in him in that time, in that moment when the Lord manifested. His Israelites didn't believe in him. And we know the story when we believe in the, read the Gospels. So here in the Psalms, it was anticipating and saying that he was going to have enemies. And this is why it says, I shall be saved from my enemies. When the Lord speaks this, he had not yet been born in the flesh. He was manifesting in spirit through the mouth of the singers of Israel. But since the Lord already knew the future, all that was going to happen, this is why the Lord here says, I will be saved from my enemies. <clears throat> Verse 4, the pangs of death surrounded me and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sh sorrows of shoals surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. The enemies of the Lord did all these things with him. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. 
Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. Here narrating the anger, or the rage of God, against all of those who were opposed from the plan of the Lord, who became enemies of our God. In one way or another, here the Lord began to punish those persons whom one day were his people or his children, and there in this moment rebelled against God and did not want to do the will of the Lord. This is why the Lord became angry and here describing the rage of the Lord. In here speaking of this behavior that the Lord had in his anger, in his rage. Verse 10, and he rode upon a cherub, the Lord, and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Meaning that the Lord begins or began to apart himself, separating himself from the people, from those people, those chosen of God. The Lord began to hide and flee apart from them, leaving them alone. Verse 12, from the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he va vanquished them. Then, then the channels of the water were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Here describing the greatness of the Lord, the marvels of God, what the Lord did in his anger and with his power. And when it says that the Lord hides and with his power and simply with his breath, with the breath of his nostrils, he did so much greatness, so many marvels the Lord did. Here reiterating the greatness of what is our God. This is why we say the Lord is very merciful. Because who can sustain the presence of our Lord? Because here in another psalm it says that in the presence of God, the earth shakes. And who can resist it? The Lord. But the Lord makes himself so tiny and inferior to be able to be close to us. So that we can have a little bit of communication with him. This is why we are not going to fail before him. As those in the ancient times failed before God. After the Lord did so many marvels and so many miracles and sent so many prophets to speak to them for they to be a people that were holy and praise God to glorify him, to search for him with the heart and they didn't. So the Lord becomes angry, angry, but here it describes the power of God and we today see the mercy of the Lord with us that even though he is great and powerful, that we don't have enough words to describe him. Not even our mentality or our imagination cannot reach the measure of what is God. We are like ants. I think we have the mind as of an ant. An ant, what can he think? What can an ant think of seeing so many things around him? things that are big to her. This is how we are before God, like an ant. Our thoughts, our mentality doesn't reach the measure of what is God. But he is so merciful that we feel his presence. And with a little bit of his spirit that he gives us, with a little bit of the spirit that God gives us, because we cannot resist the power of God but just a little. But either way, with this, we are happy. With that, we praise God. We speak in tongues. We prophesy. The Lord gives discernment, visions, dreams. There are miracles. With this little that God gives, 
because we don't resist anymore the power. He gives us until our capacity, our human capacity, can resist. This is the mercy of God. And this is the privilege that the Lord has had with man, with mankind. The privilege that the Lord never had with unanimated or with animals, simply with mankind. The Lord has had all of these privileges. Thanks be to the Lord. We thank the Lord because we are not worthy. We don't deserve it. But he wants to recreate in his creatures and his children. The Lord wants to recreate. And it says here what the Lord did in verse 16. He sent from above. He took me. Here the Lord Jesus speaking. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. These many waters is the people of the world, is mankind. The waters meaning mankind. He delivered me from my strong enemy, the strong enemy is the devil. <clears throat> and from those who hated me, even for they were too strong for me, too strong because they ordered, because they had authority. Because during that time, let us say the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that the Bible narrates, they were whom read the law of Moses. They were governors, they were teachers. They had authority over the people. And the Lord Jesus did not have any function in the people to direct. He did not have authority. Simply, he was there preaching the law of Moses, preaching the gospel, teaching the people to look for God, to worship. And this is why the enemies, since they had authority and could order the soldiers to take him, to put him in prison to put him in jail or to stone him or to take his life that was the power they had and the Lord Jesus did not have that power to defend himself this is why it says he delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me for they were too strong for me strong in that sense of authority because the Lord was a regular man a Jew in Jerusalem a normal person for he did not have a voice or vote or command. So there the enemies were powerful and strong. They gave orders and the others fulfilled these orders. Verse 18. You may read. Help me. It reads 19. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord Jesus speaking, that the Father had been pleased. 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. Speaking of his spiritual life, of how the Lord was rewarding him, helping him forward. Because of he being a person that was righteous and honest and clean of his heart and clean of his hands. 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Continue with 22. He says that he never departed from the law of Moses. He always fulfilled the law. All he fulfilled. And this is why he had the capacity of annulling it removing it on the cross of Calvary there on the cross of Calvary it was removed the law of Moses the regulations and all that Moses for the authority for the will of God had ordered the people of Israel and the Lord Jesus he fulfilled with all to be able to remove it and to commence a new law a new covenant without leaving the Ten Commandments that the Lord had written with his finger on the tablets. Those Ten Commandments have still functioned till today and they will continue until the day the Lord comes for his people. And the Lord fulfilled 
with this law of Moses to then remove it. We live today for the gospel or the law of the spirit of God, which is the same of the commandments that the Lord wrote on the tablets of stone. The same. And today, they, these commandments are extracted. Each commandment is extracted so that we can live a righteous and holy life. <clears throat> and more explicit, the commandments that the Lord taught. Because if the Lord and his commandments said, said, do not harm your neighbor, do not harm him, or love your neighbor as yourself, that was the command. Perhaps that order, no one understood it. What does it mean, love your neighbor as yourself? That's sufficient. No. From there flows many things. From there comes the rest of actions that we need to fulfill to complete that order. So when it says you need to love your neighbor as yourself, is what? To say, what is to love myself? What do I want for myself? I want the best for myself. I want happiness. I want to have what is necessary. I want to have food. I want to have a place to live that nothing hurts, that I'm not lacking anything, that I don't even want to have a bee bite sting me. This is what we want. Oh, I don't even want to have a bee sting me. Even this we desire. Always wanting the best for ourselves. We want to live comfortably, to have comfort, to enjoy. This, so love your neighbor as yourself. So if I'm going to love my neighbor, what would that be? To harm him? To slap him? To tell him? Deceive him? Insult? To abuse or to steal from them? To take what little they have? To deceive him? To trick him? Or to take him and have him be a false witness and put him in prison? Is this what we do with our neighbor? No. <clears throat> because if I don't want anything bad to myself, I wouldn't do this or want this for another. So we see in the gospel, the order, the command of the Spirit of God, the order of the gospel of the Lord has not changed of this commands that the Lord wrote on the tablets. Simply, they are now explained. The Holy Spirit today has taught us and has explained commandment by commandment with explanation, with illustrations, so that we can understand and comprehend and in this way do the will of God. So the commandments of the Lord are like the laws, but we as well have to get the precepts. And in these regulations and rules, it is this until everything is clarified. This is of the Lord. So we today, this is why we rejoice and enjoy, because not in any moment have we abandoned the law of our Lord, the law that the Lord wrote on the tablets. We do repeat them. We see that we have to fulfill all these things. When it says, do not kill, do not commit adultery. And what is do not kill? Well, it's not only to kill a person and taking their life, but also to harm their spiritual life and to de destroy their happiness. This is as well to kill a person, not physically, but to kill their soul or their spirit. So as we see that these Ten Commandments that the Lord wrote on the tablets, we as well fulfill them in the gospel of the Lord. And the only thing that we are not fulfilling today are the rituals and all of those requirements of rituals of that Moses taught to the people. That he taught them, do not work on the Sabbath, do not eat pork, do not drink certain drinks, do not eat this or that. All of these type of rituals and sacrifices, you have to take animals to the temple, that you have to do that or the other. All of that was changed in the gospel. Changed. Because the Lord Jesus taught us that we are those animals that in the ancient times were sacrificed. The animals of sacrifice are us. We are a living sacrifice for God. We sacrifice ourselves, abandoning sin, abandoning what produced pleasure and what we thought was beautiful and displeases God. Abandoning that and sacrificing our flesh. That is the sacrifice of the animal during that time. 
that the altar, that the incense, that we had to do certain things, the certain prayers of the believers in Christ. The prayer today is the incense, not the physical incense of an aroma or a smoke that rises, but it is our prayers, our praise that go for the Lord. So if we remember that we have not stopped doing anything that the Lord taught, we have not stopped. On the contrary, the Holy Spirit today teaches us that we have to fulfill better than the ancient people. We will never finish because this is a very extensive subject to compare and see that we today are that sacrifice and we are that incense and that altar and we are that temple for the Lord. So we, for this today, we feel the presence of God or of the spirit of our life because the Lord has wanted to form a people, a congregation for he to manifest and we are giving our heart to say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord, my heart for you to come to me to do what you want. This is why sometimes the world or the people or their religions ask us and say, why do we in our church, the Holy Spirit d doesn't manifest or the gifts or the prophecy like with you guys, because you've not opened your heart for the Lord. But the Lord here is forming us. And we here are before the Lord, willing. We are willing. And he is teaching us day by day the doctrine, his word. So the Lord Jesus is whom first fulfilled the law of Moses. And then he annulled this of the law of Moses, meaning the sacrifices ended, meaning the ending of not working on the Sabbath, the specific feast, this of Passover, because Passover is Jesus Christ. The Sabbath, the day of rest, is Jesus Christ. So since all of this ended, we are here fulfilling this day of rest every day with the Lord. Fulfilling and living with the Lord consistently. And for this, in the verse, in verse 21, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. 22, for all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. The Lord said to the father and of course his church as well, because the Lord began to teach his church, his believers through the Holy Spirit that we had to keep the commandments of the Lord. And in verse 23, the Lord said, please read. So I was blameless. I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Hear the Lord saying to the father, with the merciful, you shall show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. He that does not do the will of God. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. Continue with 28. For by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The way of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory be to the Lord. What a beautiful promise when it says that he is a shield to all who trust in him. And we are waiting in God always, trusting in him, believing in him, and learning the doctrine to never apart from his law, from his commandments, from his doctrine, from his statutes, to never apart, but always to continue with this commandment, with all of this, 
that the Lord gave to Moses one day and that man could not fulfill. But today we, we can fulfill with the help of the Spirit of God or with the Holy Spirit as we call it, which is the same. And here is the Lord guiding us. And I think the Lord will gather and will embrace all of he that is willing in his heart for the Lord. Because the Lord is merciful and that is the promise that he has made that all heart and soul willing for him, the Lord will bless and he will teach and he will take to the place that is convenient. And in this manner, this is what he wants for us to love our Lord and desire to do the will of God. That we not be hard of heart, nor self-willing, or stubborn, nor disobedient, but that we always be trying to do the will of God and to please Him in all, so that the Lord will recreate with His church and continue bringing many people around from around the world, from different nations, that He bring the people to save them, to bless them, and to make them happy because the Lord makes us happy. Glory be to our Lord. We give the glory to our Lord. And now, brothers and sisters, let us glorify our Lord as well today, honoring our Lord with a few questions. And with a few questions this afternoon, let us ask our questions. Sister Maria Luisa, good afternoon. A special greeting from all the brothers and sisters from Dubai at the, in the Emirates. We give an invitation for you to visit those deserts. How many are gathering? We have teaching of even 40 brothers and sisters that arrive from many countries to come to visit in that gathering. How beautiful, a special greeting for all of you. Glory to the Lord, a special greeting. I want to read the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. And if you could please, you're American, correct, brother? Yes, yes, sister, I'm American. Wow, look at how well he manages the language of Spanish. That is the work of the Lord, sister. This question James, is this, I'm speaking in Spanish. I know it's not easy for me, but this is a promise of the Lord that I would be before you. Glory to the Lord. James chapter 5, verse 16. James 5, verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The question I have, sister, meditating upon this verse, confess your trespasses to one another so that you may be healed. Verse 16 of James. Are we on the scripture, brothers and sisters? The apostle here is giving the recommendation to the believers. Advice. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Save in many ways. It could be it will save them in their spiritual life as well, saving them from the illness. So the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Why? Because a person, after he receives a benefit on behalf of the Lord, how is he not going to repent? How is he not going to feel joy and happiness and gratitude? And in this gratitude, he repents and believes in the Lord and says, Oh, I repent. I believe in you, Lord. I want to continue from now on. Look at the miracle you have done. 
So this is where it says, he is saved, you shall be saved. If he can, has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So if that person repents, it's a sign of gratitude for the Lord. There the Lord forgives him and he saves him. Saves him, meaning from there on, he has to continue in the path of the Lord. And in 16, so he says, he advises, confess your trespasses to one another. This is when a person, when there was discord between brothers and then there comes the forgiveness. But for there to be forgiveness, you have to recognize and say, I want you to forgive me because I came against you such action. I spoke bad about you. I said this, this, and that. Or I did wrong. I did something wrong against you. I stole from you. I sent someone to steal from you or to kidnap you or hurt you. So you have to confess that harm that you did to ask for forgiveness. And that way that person will say, okay, I forgive you. But if you simply go and say, oh, forgive me, forgive me. And that's all. Forgive you for what? First list the wrong that you did. And then I will know if I forgive you or not. And that is the best forgiveness that you have to recognize and say what was the wrong that there be that true forgiveness. So this is why it says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. This we do. We do this of laying hands so that if the person are sick and the, the Lord be merciful and give healing with the laying on of hands. The fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man avails much, and this is true. The prayer of the righteous man means a person that is following the path of the Lord, that loves the Lord, that has guarded and kept himself from sin, that no longer has maliciousness or hate or grudges in his heart, that no longer wants to harm another. He is just. <clears throat> when he prays to the Lord and asks something, the Lord listens and answers and grants this prayer, this petition. This is what it says, that the efficient prayer does much. So we, hopefully, the Lord will say, hopefully the Lord, the day, the Lord will say, she is righteous or he is righteous and I will hear the prayer and I will bless. I will ask, I will grant what they are asking. This brother, I hope you have had an experience in your prayer that you have asked and the Lord has answered. The Lord has answered thousands of prayers for me. So I thank the Lord. And this is how we thank our Lord for hearing our prayer and for answering. Let us continue. Sister, good evening. I give the glory to our Lord in name of all the church for you choosing that path of salvation and saving our hearts and souls. I have a question in the book of Isaiah 52 verse one. Isaiah chapter 52 verse one. You may read verse one and two. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Sister, my question regarding this verse, we understand that Zion is the people of Israel. And we understand many words asking regarding the spirits and the bondage. How can we differentiate the bondage of a spirit if it's different? And how can we awaken and continue forward in this path and deliver ourselves from this bondage? Maybe we don't see them because we think that we're fine, that we're not sinning because we're not stealing, we're not killing, we're not hurting our parents, but we have bondage. If you could please teach us. Very well. As you read, because what it, you're asking is different than the scripture. 
but how beautiful to meditate on the verses the sister reads. Beautiful to remember that here it says, Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion, the church of Christ. Beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, not the physical, but the spiritual, which is the church of our Lord. O holy city, for the uncircumcised shall no longer come to you. Look at this profoundness, brothers and sisters, when the Lord speaks here to Zion or the church of our Lord, the church of Christ formed by men and women of different places around the world. And that once they know the gospel, they know the word of the Lord, the person changes because the Holy Spirit begins to transform and cleanse. And this person stops sinning. So the person is clean, pure. They are holy. This is why the Lord says his church, his believers, he calls them holy. Because they are no longer sinning. They no longer have those spiritual stains. This is why he says, oh, beautiful Jerusalem. Never again the uncircumcised or unclean will come to you. So the, uncircum so the circumcision in the ancient times you have read that the circumcision was done to be part of the people of Israel. That circumcision had a symbolism for the future, symbolizing the worldliness or the uncleanliness. He that is circumcised was part of the people of Israel. And if he wasn't, he was not part of the people. Those who are not circumcised were, in the wor were, un were worldly, were unclean but symbolically meaning sin in the gospel the lord began to say that you have to be circumcised in the heart no longer that physical aspect of the circumcision in the ancient times it is the heart circumcise the heart believe in god apart from sin that is a circumcision when we have separated from sin and have believed in the Lord, we say that we are circumcised. So therefore, here when it says, uncircumcised, the unclean shall no longer come to you, are the sinners full of wickedness that cannot be part of the church. The church of our Lord is formed with men and women, holy and perfect, apart from sin. And this is why we here are perfect every day reaching that perfection cleansing ourselves to be the church of the lord to be that perfection so in the church of the lord there is no sin there is no unclean and uncircumcised so we are here walking every day cleansing aparting from sin to be the church we cannot say, oh, I am the church because I am perfect. No, but say, I am here struggling, walking, marching forward, procuring for the Lord to tell me I am his church. It is this. So see that this verse is well in two. He says to the church, shake yourself from the dust, sit down, arise. Lose yourself from the bonds of your neck. The people in the ancient times when they were captive or slaves, remember the slaves of the captive in the ancient times, they would put something on their neck so they couldn't escape. They would put something on their neck and the person couldn't escape because they were captive. They were a slave of someone. And in the same way, the people before knowing God, they are slaves of the devil slaves of sin slave full of bondage of all that the devil did with us in the world to make us suffer and that once we know god the lord broke that shackle that chain and delivered us and now we are free and we no longer have this bondage we're no longer slaves of the devil because we are free following the lord so here, remove this bond from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. You have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. When you believe in Christ, without money, without price, the people will be saved. The Lord takes them to bless them. Glory to the Lord. 
So these bonds that the sister speaks of, that we today, the spirits, demons, if these are shackles, yes, these are shackles, that a person may have a spirit or various spirits in their body, the laziness, lie, deceit, fraud, illness, whatever it might be, because there are many spirits of diverse things that enter and possess a person and enslave them, does not let the person pray, does not give them freedom, they don't have joy or peace or happiness. All of these are shackles. So when we know the Lord, we come full of shackles and of much wrong and faults and mistakes, but the Lord begins to change us and cleanse us little by little. In the midst that we believe and trust and pray to the Lord, he changes us. But all of this as well is called bondage, shackles, the devil places on the people. So to pray, trust in the Lord, be willing in the heart, put our part for the Lord to deliver us 100%. Let us continue another question. In the other room, there's a question. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, sister. A joy to be here. I have a question. In the miracle of the Lord. I know that from the doctrine, uh, we should avoid arguments. Until what point do is there a balance to defend the things of the Lord or be silent and not arguing? We as well need to see that who is guiding or teaching. The teacher has the right to correct his students, but between the students, be cautious, do not discord, be in agreement, simply this. If the brother is speaking to defend the things of God or be silent, the things of God you always need to defend. This of God, we always place on high and not allow anyone to come and mock the things of the Lord or speak or criticize or belittle the things of God or speak blasphemy. So you correct people, you correct others. But discord in other levels, you simply avoid, have patience, be prudent. You avoid arguments. But the things of the Lord, we do defend and place on high. Another question? Good evening, sister. A pleasure again, a privilege to be here again before you, before our servant. Buenas tardes, hermana. Un privilegio estar aquí delante de la sierva del Señor. The Lord told me that he'd be uh, answering many questions through, our, through his servant. Dios me prometió que a través de su sierva respondería muchas de mis preguntas. So I uh, would like to ask the two of them in the Bible, if I may. Y tengo dos preguntas en la Biblia. La primera se encuentra en el Libro de Judas, capítulo 1, versículo 6. So my first question in Jude, chapter 1, verse 6 is, um, And the angels who did not keep their pro proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of this great day. Judas, capítulo Judas, versículo número 6, y a los ángeles que no guardaron su dignidad, sino que abandonaron su propia morada, los ha guardado bajo oscuridad en prisiones eternas para el juicio del gran día. So my question is, what is it to keep the proper domain? And are there chains on them now? I, I thought the, the, the percentage of the angels, they, they fell and they became demons, so they're already demons. How, how are they going to be judged and uh, what will their punishment be? Y mi pregunta, hermana, es, eh, ¿qué es que no guardaron su dignidad? Eh, yo pensaba que ter la tercera parte de los ángeles se convirtieron en demonios y si ya son demonios, entonces, ¿cuál sería su castigo? ¿Ya tienen cadenas o cómo los castigaría el Señor? At the beginning, before sinning, they were angels. And they had their rank or their title of angel. That is the abode. So their abode, we read the Bible. But they had angels, the Lord said. They had archangel and um, cherubs as well. This, this is an abode. 
a rank. Do we see they had ranks? They had archangel, they had cherub. So they left this rank. The title that they had, like today we say a doctor, the other is an architect, and the other is an engineer. Each one has their title, their abode. He is a doctor, he's an engineer, he's an architect. This is the abode. At the beginning, they were angels. When the Lord gave that to them, but the devil rebelled. And his followers did the same. Millions of angels went with the devil and they rebelled against God. So the angels that did not keep their proper domain that the Lord had given them, they were angels of God. Now they were bad angels. They left their own domain. And the Lord has them in an everlasting chain in darkness for a judgment one day. The Revelation, the book of Revelation says that the final judgment comes. In judgment, the Lord will be judging the devil and his angels, his followers that are already demons. They're no longer angels, but demons. And he will judge mankind as well who did not want to believe in God. This is the day of judgment. So for there, this moment, these angels are in prison. They're in darkness, meaning that they do not have the right to see God, nor be with God. And for they, it is simply darkness. But among these angels that rebelled against God, the Lord casted them out. Those are the demons that today are doing wrong against mankind. All these demons come and enter the body of the people to do harm, to make them suffer, to make them sick, to make them schizophrenia. They have loss of their mind. They have sicknesses, illnesses. This is how the demons work. Others are in space. Others are in prisons. This is how the Bible narrates that the Lord has all these demons that followed the devil. My second question, if I may, is this. Sister, in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5. Mi segunda pregunta, hermana, se encuentra en el libro de Isaías, capítulo número 4, versículo número 5. And then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a covering. Versículo número 5. Y creará Jehová sobre toda la morada del monte de Sion y sobre los lugares de sus convocaciones nube y oscuridad de día y de noche, resplandor de fuego que eche llamas. Porque sobre toda gloria habrá un dosel. Of course, this reminds us of uh, Exodus when the Israelites left Egypt. So my question is, there a correlation? And if not, can you explain what is the cloud and smoke by day? Where is this? Uh, could you be specific? Hermana, y encuentro yo o recuerdo yo eh, cuando el pueblo de Israel salió de eh, Egipto. ¿Tiene esto alguna, eh, eh, ¿tiene alguna relación? relación estos versículos? Y si no, eh, ¿me puede explicar, por favor? Very well. Here, referring to the church of the Lord, or the believers in Jesus Christ. Here, speaking, because in verse 2, in that day, meaning in the future, speaking of the future from when Isaiah prophesied, so looking at how many years from Isaiah to this time, how many years have passed. So we're in the future of this verse 2. In that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, meaning Jesus Christ. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of Israel, which is Christ who came to save mankind, found a remnant of Israel and the rest of the persons of the world who have converted or shall convert to Jesus Christ. They're speaking of Christ in his church. So in verse 4, when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, meaning when the Lord Jesus Christ forgives the sins 
of the believer or the church, the believers in Christ, and cleanse, purge the blood of Jerusalem, meaning the church, by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. We see how the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God is what is working in the believers. And this is why the Holy Spirit is forming the church, cleansing the believer, transforming to live holy, to be a church. So here, that through this spirit of judgment and by spirit of burning, the Lord will be cleansing or sanctifying, purifying his church or his believers. And it continues, then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion, which is a church, and above her assemblies, a cloud and smoke. The Lord will create this by day and the shining of a flame fire by night. For over all the glory, there will be a covering. And there will be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat for a place of refuge and for a shelter from storm which is Christ. Christ is doing the work of the, the storm, the refuge, the shelter, because when he came to preach the gospel, all that believed in him will have eternal life. And not only eternal life, but we have peace and joy and happiness in our life. Meanwhile, he is our refuge, our, he is whom purifies and cleanses us. Here, speaking of Christ and his work and his church and what he continues to do through the Holy Spirit. Thank you once again for your heart, for your labor in the vineyard. May the Lord continue to bless and support you um, as well as his church. I truly love you in the Lord and proud to call you sister. Muchas gracias, hermana, eh, y por su labor en la viña del Señor. Me siento orgulloso de llamarla hermana. Dios la bendiga. Yes, yes. Thank you. Let us continue. Good, af good afternoon, sister. It's an honor to have you here in Houston, Texas. The Lord, with his great mercy, revealed to me in dreams of your coming. A little about myself, I've been congregating here for almost two years now. La hermana quiere saludarla, darle la bienvenida, hermana María Luisa. Está muy contenta de que se encuentra aquí en Houston. El Señor la ha bendecido mucho y está muy contenta y es promesa del Señor. The Lord, with His mercy, allowed me to obtain the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues in a little about a year. El Señor, en su inmensa misericordia, desde que llegué a la iglesia, me ha permitido recibir los dones del Espíritu y recibir el bautismo con el Espíritu Santo. Glory. Glory be to the Lord. And we thank God for the sister that takes her time to translate the Bible studies in English. It's very beautiful and a great blessing for those that speak English. The Lord all um, allows, the Lord always uses his instruments in the marvelous way. También quiero darles muchas gracias a los hermanos que hacen las traducciones porque es una bendición muy grande poder entender los, los estudios bíblicos en nuestro idioma en inglés y es una bendición muy hermosa porque el Señor así nos permite entender mucho mejor la doctrina. I want to say, Sister María Luisa, is, is that I've learned a lot from the Bible studies from the Lord. You are a great instrument from the Lord and we are very happy and greatly edified on how the Lord uses you. Quiero darle muchas gracias al Señor porque he aprendido mucha doctrina a través de los estudios bíblicos. El Señor me ha enseñado mucho a través de sus palabras, de lo que usted me ha enseñado, y ha edificado mucho mi corazón y ha sido de gran crecimiento. And we can say, sister, that your efforts are not in vain, because we are all struggling for salvation and eternal life. We thank the Lord. Y podemos decir que su, todo su trabajo no es en vano porque todos estamos esforzándonos y trabajando fuertemente para nuestra salvación y le damos las gracias a usted, hermano. Ok, I have a quick question, sister. Um, on Romans chapter 14, verse 13. To verse 21. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 22 to verse 23. Tengo una pregunta, hermana, en el libro de Romanos, en el capítulo número 14. 
Y la pregunta va del versículo número 13 hasta el 23, pero la hermana va a leer principalmente el versículo 22 y el 23 para la honra y la gloria del Señor. Sí. Le voy a leer, voy a leer sí. el versículo en español para que entonces lo puedan leer. Dice el versículo Romanos capítulo 14, Romans 14 versículo, versículo número 22, dice así. ¿Tienes tu fe? Tenía para contigo, tenla para Happy contigo delante de Dios. Bienaventurado el que no se condena a sí mismo en lo que aprueba. Pero el que duda sobre lo que come es condenado porque no lo hace con fe y todo lo que no proviene de fe es pecado. La pregunta es la siguiente. Um, sister, I would like to ask, um, um, can you please explain the two verses? And can we, um, can we have the same feelings today? And can you please explain the importance, sister? Thank you. Explain the importance, the significance of the um, verse. Mi, hermana, mi pregunta es básicamente que si me puede explicar esos versos, cómo se pueden aplicar hoy en día y la importancia que tiene para nosotros. Romans 14, verse 22. But first let us read verse 17, because it's the content. 17. The Apostle Paul teaches, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For there was a group of persons that were the followers of the law of Moses who were judging the followers of the gospel. And they wanted for they to stop eating certain foods, certain animals, and certain beverages. And they were judging them and placing problems and obstacles in their spiritual life because of their eating habits. And the apostle says, the kingdom of God, the gospel, is not eating and drinking, but doing righteousness, having peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is why he continues with the scripture teaching regarding foods, that we did not have to destroy the spiritual life another because of food. 20. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat, is an example, an illustration that he says here. It is good not to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended, or makes him weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Meaning, the person says, oh, I do want to eat meat. Well, then eat meat. You do it discreetly. And the other says, no, I don't want to eat meat. Well, then don't eat meat. But be discreet and don't force the other. Don't force another your thoughts because you don't eat meat. You don't want the other to eat meat. Or if you do, you want to force the other to eat. Do what you want discreetly for yourself. So do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. It is that. So the person has their concepts. Each person says, well, I'm only going to eat vegetables because I feel better eating vegetables. Don't criticize another. Don't judge another. Don't force another to do that. Simply, you live your life how you want, how you think is best for you. So don't condemn what you approve. 23, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin, meaning the pro what you prohibit with the foods during that time in the people of Israel, the teachings that was given by Moses. So they ate and they doubted. Oh, is it right? Is it not right? Am I sinning? Am I not sinning? Am I not sinning because I'm eating this? So the Lord says, no, have certainty in yourself, have conviction, do things on your, with yourself because you want to, because you don't want to, and not with doubt, because then with doubts, you're eating meat and then you say, oh, I'm sinning. Oh, I surely did sin because I ate meat. And now what I'm going to do? 
you say no. If you ate meat, for example, pork, you know now it's not a sin because that was a sin of the past. And now since Jesus Christ has forgiven those that are coming to the Lord, believing in the Lord, they can now eat pork because the Lord taught that there were unclean animals in the ancient times, but he gave a revelation to Peter where he said that all animal could be eaten because meaning the sin of man and that since Christ had forgiven on the cross of Calvary, the sins of man, then all could eat all animals. They could eat what was called unclean. So there was this freedom to eat what you want. But there are many people still today who think that it's a sin to eat certain foods. So we don't need to judge. Everyone have your own criteria and do what you think and don't eat with doubt. That's the sin. Let us continue. Sister Maria Luisa, good afternoon. It is a blessing of the Lord. My question, sister, is in John 4, 24. And then also Luke 24, 39. But I'm going to read John 4, 24. It reads, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And I understand that the Lord taught his disciples that when he was with, he taught this when he was with them in the ministry. But also let us now go to Luke 24, 39. Luke 24, 39. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Sister, my question is, um, we have been taught that the Lord is spirit. So how is it then that here the Lord resurrected his body and spirit? And he says, touch here and see. That's my question. I'm not sure if you have read or if you have read and have analyzed or have thought as the brother just did that the Lord told the Samaritan that he is spirit and that since God is spirit, we have to look for him in spirit and in truth. But the sister here also reads the narration when he resurrected, when the Lord resurrected on the third day of his death resurrecting and came to his disciples and the disciples thought that they were seeing a vision or a spirit and the Lord says no I am complete of flesh and bone touch me because I'm here I'm not a spirit give me to eat and he ate with them to prove to them that he had resurrected this is why it is said that during that time, the Jews said that it was a lie, that Jesus Christ had not resurrected, but that his disciples had hidden the body, and they had taken the body somewhere else. But the Lord did resurrect with his body, and he manifested to the people, like to 500 persons, the Bible says, he manifested. And what happened after? that the Lord rose to the heavens, the Bible shares. He rose and a cloud covered him. To he occurred the same as Elijah. I don't know if the sister that asked the question read the story of Elijah the prophet. And remember, sister, that Elijah the prophet as well rose to the heavens in physical body, rose and saw how the cloud covered him. And we don't know what the Lord did with Elijah, but he rose with his body. And Enoch, the Bible shares that Enoch as well, the Lord took him and he did not see death, but the Lord took him. We don't know in space what happened, what the Lord did. 
the same with Moses. So therefore, with the Lord Jesus, it occurred. He resurrected with his physical body and he rose to the heavens and a cloud covered him. There the Lord did something and then the Lord taught that we had to believe in Jesus Christ because he was going to manifest from there on in spirit, no longer in the physical, but in spirit. So as it occurred to Elijah, the same thing occurred to the Lord. But what is certain is that the Bible mentions that the Lord manifest in spirit to the people because the Lord is not anything physical that the Lord had taken for a few years, took a body. The Lord Jesus Christ was born from a woman. For the Lord, there is nothing impossible. How are we going to doubt that a portion of God, of the greatness that is of our Lord, because I think that the size of our Lord is all of the universe. I think that is the body of the Lord is our universe. So a little bit of he simply with the breath of his nostril, he did so much. We just read this in Psalms 18, just with his breath, he did this. So imagine with the rest of his power, the greatness of God is like the universe or greater. So for the Lord, it was not impossible he to have done that 33 years he would have worked as a man jesus christ in flesh as a human being and the lord with him in him there working with the people with man and then later he becomes man and they sacrifice him he dies and the third day he resurrects and rises to the heavens difficult for the lord having that physical body disappear no it's not difficult and the lord continues being the living god in spirit and in truth let us never doubt of god nor doubt of the lord jesus christ we say that jesus christ his name christ was the human aspect he took but he has been the same god that has done all things and he has manifested in that way. He humbled himself to become a man, but just a little portion of God, of what is the Lord. Because the rest, God is there with the universe governing it. So therefore, for us, there is nothing impossible. And we do not need to doubt because we are small, we are little, incapable. And just as we are, we are compared pairing our Lord but we cannot the greatness of the Lord is unexplainable and there is no word to express the glory of our God let us continue forward sister Maria Luisa I want to express it is marvelous for me to be able to tell you all that I feel I thank you so much my question is regarding that I was learning in the teachings regarding the support of the Lord. So we, those of us who have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, I think I work for the Lord when I preach of his word and all the wonders he's done in my life of those here in Houston that I know. But sometimes I feel sad because I've been able to accomplish that many people come to the church but sad when they don't come back and i've seen how the lord is fulfilling for them and has fulfilled because they've shared a little bit of what they lived but they don't come back and i always asked is it was i always lacking should i have needed more support from the lord maybe god needed to use me more for maybe that person truly to be here, for example, in this day. Because it is a joy that we all feel when we see for someone to come and know of this true God that manifests in spirit and truth. Thank you, Sister Maria Luisa, 
for all of your love. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. We do a task and we work. We do all with our heart, with joy. And the results, God gives. Let us not expect so much. How many prophecies have I given to people? How many persons have received prophecy for the first time? Millions of persons, I would say. And where are they? They're not here. But we're not going to be afflicted because of this. Let us not be sad or lose hope. We have to continue forward doing the task. We have to do our work and let God choose whom he will bring, who he will save, or who, he will, who will stay. Let us leave this in the hands of God, for he does the work, but the Lord does reward the task we do. Simply do your work and let God do his will. Sister, continue to work and God will reward. Let us continue. Good afternoon, sister. May God bless you. A special greeting from the Church of New Orleans. I have a question regarding the Bible, if you please allow. My question Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Excuse my Spanish, it's not that great, but promise of the Lord that I would be asking in Spanish. Yes, brother, you may read. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these, these God will bring you into judgment. Sister, in the Bible, previous Bible studies, we have been taught for us to enjoy our youth but to never and always remember that God is watching us. My question is for the youth who want to sacrifice their youth to leave the desires of the world and dedicate to serve God. If God gives the Holy Spirit and what advice can you give the youth who truly want to serve God with our heart? Yes. So here in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, are we on the reading? Read verse 9. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For a childhood and youth are vanity. Vanity. So therefore, here the Lord is telling the youth to be joyful in the youth, to be happy, to have joy in their heart, to walk in the path of what he sees, of what he is discovering of the world, to enjoy. But to be very careful, youth, be careful, because upon this, the Lord will judge. Because we are speaking of men and women, the youth. So therefore, remove from your heart the anger and away evil from your flesh. So no matter the youth, it is not allowed to be sinning because adolescence is vanity. And that the Lord will judge those in their youth, the adolescence, the Lord will judge. Never the Bible says that the Lord will judge or punish the children, but the youth in the adolescence, because they have their reasonings and they're responsible. They know what they're doing, what they have to do, what's good and bad. So the youth sometimes say, there are those that say, why don't you do a service or a gathering special for the youth? For the youth, for what? The Bible study and the teachings that we give for the adults is for the youth. It is a value because 
the Lord is teaching to apart from sin. So the youth are not exempt from not sinning. The Lord is not going to tolerate sin. They as well have to guard themselves in holiness. The youth to keep themselves in holiness. To enjoy well. To enjoy in holiness what their heart wants. To do things without sinning. Without doing anything evil or wicked. To not offend God. This is for the youth. So we see... That why are we going to do a separate gathering for the youth when the Lord to the youth as well he's going to charge or judge as well as the elder because he has the capacity of understanding and comprehending the path of God has the capacity to understand of discerning and choosing their life so the youth and the adolescents they have to guard and keep themselves we have to guard ourselves from wickedness, from evil. We have to please God. We have to obey God. This is why in the church we recommend the youth, the young men and the young men, the young girls and boys to not have boyfriends or girlfriends, to avoid dating because the church is small, to avoid this in the church. So there we see the boy is dating the girl in the church and they're, they're dating and then they break up and then now he sees another girl in the church and now he's dating the other girl so the uh, previous girlfriend is now upset and now there's a rivalry going on and this is why dating is not allowed in the church we do not allow dating within the church for the youth so if a young man falls so in love with a young girl in the church they marry but none of this of dating within the church because I think that this gives a bad testimony within the congregation. Souls are even lost. Because the youth will say, oh, a young girl will say, oh, I dated him. Oh, I went out with her. We dated. Oh, but I don't want him to see me anymore. I don't want anyone to know that we were dating. And now I see him going out with another. And then they say, oh, I'm not going back to church because I don't want to see him anymore. Or he says, I don't want to go back to church because I don't want to see her anymore. But this is to live in an orderly fashion, to respect God, to love God, to value God, and to do the will of the Lord. This is why when there are couples within the church of adults that divorce two, three times, and they're marrying two or three times, they're divorced, and now they're marrying somebody else. Today, we have had to expel them from the church because that is disorderly that is a bad testimony so if you want to get married various times because you don't understand your spouse you get divorced now you want to marry someone else and you get divorced now you want to marry someone else this cannot be tolerated within the church that is a sin that is a sin before god this disorderly lifestyle it is best that you don't come back to church it's best to not return to church live in the world live in your life and you and the world can get married however many times you want. And then maybe one day the Lord will have mercy on you. And maybe you will tire of your disorderly lifestyle. But it is best not to allow this lifestyle in the church because that's disrespectful. So publicly I'm teaching this. And maybe the pastors are going to hear this teaching. And they complain of these problems in the congregation. Of the sister marrying once twice and now it's a third marriage and now she wants to get married again so this cannot be done i've had to say do not allow them to come back in the church why do you come to church if you're continuing in this sin if you if you're gonna get married or if you're gonna separate giving bad testimonies don't come back to church this is what we learn from the bible perhaps this the Lord is strict, let us say, I don't know. But I think, brothers and sisters, that is not the Lord strict, but he wants order. He wants order, and if this can be done, it can. It can be done. Good can be done. You can live well with your couple. You can live many years with the same spouse. 
because a person who loves God and who does the will of the Lord and wants to please God, the Lord helps them to be happy and to have comprehension with their spouse and they can live together many years respecting and loving one another. I know indefinite couples, hundreds of couples that live happy in the Lord, 30, 40 years of marriage. So it can be done when you want to please the Lord because the Lord helps us. The Lord helps us. So it's not the story that people say, oh, no, I'm sorry for her. I'm sorry for him. They misunderstand each other. Oh, we don't understand one another. Oh, he's crazy. She's crazy. Now, if the doctor says they're crazy, that's a different story. But if it's not the doctor and it's just because you want to separate, that's a different story. Wisdom and prudency, respect for God, love God, and you will see how the Lord will help us to live that holy life that he wants us to. May the glory be for our Lord. A final question. Sister, thank you for visiting us here in Houston. My question is in Zacharias chapter 4. Verse 11. Zachariah, Zachariah chapter 4, verse 11. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at its left? And my question, sister, these two that are anointed, these two olive trees, what do they mean? These two anointed, the brothers and sisters, those who have read the Bible, heard the Bible studies and have read the Bible, these two olive trees have a name and last name, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist was the messenger that Isaiah speaks of. In Isaiah, I will send my messenger to prepare the way of the Lord. And then later came the Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of salvation. The good news because those that were the law of Moses, because no one was saved because no one could fulfill the law and all were casted out. And the Lord, better yet, condemned the people, and the Lord came to bring good news of salvation, meaning the new method of salvation. This method of salvation that Jesus Christ brought us, which is so simple, which is to believe in him with all of our heart, and the Holy Spirit is with us to change us and to remove sin. In the ancient times, the people of Israel simply had the written commandments, but the Holy Spirit was not with them and could not help them to change. Simply, they had to change and they couldn't. So the flesh was weak and their flesh took them to sin so they could not change. The Spirit of God makes us change because he comes to us and removes that weakness, that that mentality of the flesh, sinful. The Lord removes it or the Spirit of God removes this weakness, this tendency. So therefore, it is called the good news of salvation, which is a new method of salvation that the Lord planted through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why here these two olive trees is the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. And the gold is the riches of God. The gold pipes is the gold of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is the oil. It is Gold is a precious metal valued, which are the people that love God, that are before the Lord. And I further answered and said, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles? Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. And we give thanks to our Lord for he doing all of these such marvelous things with us and giving fulfillment to his word. Since the ancient times, since Adam and Eve, the Lord speaking, teaching, and being fulfilled the things of God each day. So today, we have the proof and the signs. 
without doubt. We cannot doubt of God. We cannot doubt Jesus Christ. For we see the miracles. We see the Holy Spirit in our life of all that is written here being fulfilled in us. Because we as human beings, we don't have the power to do. But the Holy Spirit does. So we give thanks to our Lord, for we are here before his presence. Let us pray to our Lord. Let us pray to our God. And then as we finalize the prayer, we're going to sing a chorus. And I want an English-speaking brother who only speaks English and not Spanish, but can sing choruses. I want us to sing chorus number 11. I want us to sing the chorus so the brothers and sisters, I want the brothers and sisters to see that those that don't speak Spanish can sing in Spanish. You can, because this we do to honor the Lord. The Lord understands all languages because he is the owner of all. Chorus number 11, I want to have more with Jesus, but let us pray to our Lord and asking him for healings petitions needs deliverance that the lord removes shackles restraints all of this we're going to pray to our lord let us pray holy lord thank you lord thank you celestial father for your love and your mercy thank you lord we give you thanks today because we have been meditating upon your word reading your word and analyzing and sharing all of your marvels and we are recreating in your power and your promises in the joy and the happiness that you place in the heart of each one blessing and great blessings great triumphs and victories and great blessing i have given today great victory triumphs spiritually and materially great changes in the life of some persons and i have been delivering and cleansing and healing so therefore continue steadfast be joyful in your heart because later you will be seeing the fruits of your work continue forward be insisting be disciplined and joyful in your heart obey the commandments obey the word and continue strong in faith believing and searching for the spiritual gifts working and speaking to the people of my word looking for the power from on high continue be steadfast don't lose hope i am close to all of you and to each one i am helping in all of your situations in your works i am comforting because there are many with lack of comfort with sadness but i am giving blessing joy and life to many deliverance so do not be anguished because as well i am opening doors of blessings and i as well am giving monetary gain for many and i'm going to help go forward and give victories and triumphs and you shall have a change of life and you will continue forward and have deliverance and healings because I'm going to manifest with great healing. I will do miracles and signs. So therefore believe, be strong and obedient, praying, always reading the word and looking with your heart strong and sincere. Be sincere and steadfast with all things. Look each one for your spiritual fulfillment because i will be manifesting with each one of you joy and peace that will be in your hearts do not be sad do not cry simply pray and call with all of your heart look for what is perfect looking and searching and following this path of perfection analyze the word and be wise steadfast prudent in all things continue forward be merciful loving and affectionate sincere because this is what i want 
look for my face and continue forward because you will find me search because i am close to you blessing each one and delivering each one giving the joy because there has been those with heart, saddened hearts but i'm giving joy and happiness and open doors of blessings and opening doors in the sentimental life as well and removing struggles blessings opportunities look for what is right apart from sin and continue forward continue strong because the blessings are with all of you continue forward blessings thank you my lord thank you celestial father thank you all powerful lord thank you holy lord for your mercy thank you lord for your compassion thank you lord for your promises for your word for your mercy because you lord are merciful because you, Lord, are forgiving, Lord. You forgive, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The worship is for you. The praise is for you. The glory is for you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Because why ask for those that suffer of illnesses that are terminal, as is cancer and others? Lord, why ask of you? For you have already promised today, Lord, blessings healing health deliverance thank you glory to your name glory to your name forevermore glory to you lord powerful lord blessed forevermore holy are you lord you reign you are just your mercy is forevermore your mercy is forevermore your mercy is forevermore lord blessed is the lord blessed is the savior Blessed is he that lives forevermore. Blessed is you that reigns holy of holy. We are not worthy, Lord. We are not worthy of you, Lord. Worthy of your mercy, not worthy of your forgiveness, because we allow ourselves to be taken by our weaknesses. But you, O oh great Lord, are so compassionate, and you help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, your power. And your Holy Spirit that manifests. Fill us with your power and with your spirit. All of those that search for you, Lord. That want to feel the presence of your power and of your spirit. Lord, manifest. And baptize with your Holy Spirit. Those, Lord, who search for you. Those that want to speak in tongues. That they feel the presence of your spirit. Feel the power, the power from on high. Send the fire, Lord. Send from on high. Send the power, Lord. The power from on high. We want to feel the presence from on high. The power, Lord. Blessed forevermore. Thank you, eternal Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your blessings and your love, Lord. Because your word is truth. And your promises, Lord, are faithful and true. Blessed Lord, that lives and reigns forevermore. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, to you is the praise, the glory, the worship, and the power. Blessed forevermore. Blessed is your name forevermore, Lord. Powerful are you, Lord. Praised and holy is your name lord praised is your name lord praises to the king of glory glory be to my lord glorious are you lord powerful are you lord blessed is your name lord glorious are you lord holy are you father glorious is the name of the lord for you live forevermore lord whom like you O lord whom like you king of kings lords of lords magnificent wondrous and glorious you do wonders and marvels O lord thank you heavenly father thank you lord Quien como tú, magnífico en santidad, terrible en luris, hacedor de maravillas, hacedor de maravillas. Quien como tú, Jehová entre los dioses, quien como tú, 
Jehová entre los dioses, ven como tú, magnífico en santidad terrible el Uris, hacedor de maravillas, hacedor de maravillas, ven como tú, Jehová entre los dioses, ven como tú, Jehová entre los dioses, ven como tú, magnífico en santidad terrible en Lourdes, hacedor de maravillas, hacedor de maravillas, gloria a mi Señor, bendito Dios. Glory be to our Lord, blessed is the Lord, powerful is the Lord, blessed is his name. As we dismiss Lord, we're going to we're going to sing chorus number 11. We're going to ask our brother Josh to sing in Spanish with us. Chorus number 11. I want to have more with Jesus. Chorus number 11. brothers and sisters may the Lord bless you may the Lord bless you and I give thanks to our Lord for his mercy for that mercy of God and that forgiveness of God that in the midst of us in the midst of us committing so many weeks and faults the Lord offers blessings the Lord offers miracles healing deliverance the Lord offered us he didn't let me pray. He wouldn't let me pray. So thanks be to our Lord. We're not worthy. The glory is for our Lord. Until the next time, brothers and sisters, may God bless you.